you asked me to tell you about my favorite bourbons that I currently have open at the moment. Well, maybe not you, but one of you did. So guess what I did? I pulled out 10 of my favorite bottles that I currently have open, and I'm gonna reveal them to you in no particular order. But if you stick around to the end, I'll tell you my favorite bottle I currently have open in, that, in a particular order. One of my favorite bottles that I currently have open at the moment is a barrel pick of mine. It's a single barrel pick. It comes from Lynchburg, Tennessee. It's a barrel strength Jack Daniels product, bitches. It's Jack Daniels single barrel barrel proof, Friday the 13th. Whew. It's an ADHD whiskey single barrel and I can't stop drinking it. I mean, physically I could stop drinking it. I mean, I can stop drinking it, but theoretically, or how should I put it? I keep going back to it. At this rate, the bottle's not gonna last as long as I'd like it to because I enjoy it so much. Next up is a bottle that I opened on my anniversary weekend. My wife and I married for 10 years. Congrats to us. We're putting up with each other. For that celebration, I opened up one of my favorite whiskeys that came from the year 2020. It's Doc Swinson Exploratory Cask, 15 year. 15 year Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey. Did it come from those mystery totes from a Kentucky distillery that rhymes with Bim Jeem? Possibly, but the whiskey in those totes was phenomenal. This 15 year Doc Swinson small batch is ridiculously good. And I would say it's one of my favorite bottles that I currently have open at the moment. Before we get to the next bottle, let me tell you about somebody responsible for helping me open these bottles. It's today's video sponsor. Today's video was brought to us by our good friends over at Tiege Hanley. And not only are they making this video today possible, but they're making this face even more possible to look at each and every day. If you're wondering what on planet Plutron is Tiege Hanley, let me tell you. Tiege Hanley is uncomplicated skincare for men. If you're anything like me, then the last 38 years of your life, you just been sitting around thinking that your face has gotta look the way it looks. Thanks to Tiege Hanley's uncomplicated skincare system, over the past two months I went from being like extra super greasy and yucky to like way less greasy and way less yucky. To get started, try their level one system. It has a wash, a scrub, and AM and PM moisturizers. That's the level one kit right there. The PM moisturizer takes care of this while you're sleeping and the AM moisturizer has SPF 20 built in for when that sun start creeping. I'm personally using the level three system which also includes the super serum and the eye cream for my dark circles from those long nights editing. And the first thing you'll notice when you open your box is a card telling you exactly how to use your skincare system. If I can do it, you can do it. Since T. Shanley is sponsoring this video, they're offering my viewers a little something special. Click on the first link in the description box below and T. Shanley will give you 30% off your first order plus a free gift. Like this stop bag or this sweet T. face towel. But if I have to tell you my favorite free gift, it's their body wash. Their body wash is the bomb. Tiege Hanley's got all the stuff to make your skin on your face maybe less of a disgrace and more presentable to the public. Thank you so much Tiege Hanley for sponsoring this video and thank you to the viewers for supporting the companies like Tiege Hanley who support this channel. Now that we've talked about today's video sponsor, let's talk about eight more bottles that are some of my favorites I currently have open. Like I said, these are in no particular order, so I don't want you to think that I like this more than that or that more than this. I'm literally just randomly picking them up off the floor in front of me. But one of my favorite bottles I currently have open was my 2020 runner up for bourbon of the year. It's Wild Turkey Master's Keep. 17 year bottled and friggin' bond. I love this stuff. I don't even know anything about sonnets or like soliloquies or nothing, but I could write a poem about this and I'm pretty sure that it would go down in history as one of the best poems. Because when you write a poem about something so literally and liquidy beautiful, how could it not be one of the best poems ever spoken, written, or wrote? Next, let's talk about another bourbon that comes in a box that rocks my socks. This is probably the lowest proof bourbon of the bunch, but it is cask strength. It comes from a little squibbly distillery in Indiana that was formerly known as MGP. It's Remus Gatsby Reserve. <laughs> Look how good it looks. It's a sexy bottle that comes in a box that's shaped like a bear trap. 
try to touch my Remus Gatsby. Got your hand. Next on the list is a bottling from 2016. It was bottled at 100 proof and came in with a 14 year age statement. It's a small batch bourbon from the Jim Beam Distillery. It's Knob Creek 2001. For some reason, there's like this nostalgic dusty note to it that kind of brings me back to the bourbon of yesteryear. Do I have a backup bottle of this? You bet your friggin' ass I do. Do I love sharing it with others? Yeah. Do I love sharing it with myself? Yeah. Next bottle I grabbed is another product that has my initials written all over it. And by all over it, I mean it's on the batch number. It says MP1. This is from Barrel King from Bourbon, Missouri. This is my very first blend that I made with Barrel King. It's 126 proof seven plus year MGP bourbon blend, finished in Rare X bourbon barrels. This particular bottling is called The Whiskey King. It's got me on there in all my glory without my shirt on. That's exactly what I look like, no more questions. By the way, Whiskey King 2 and Whiskey King 3 are gonna be available to Patreon very soon. Four more left, and when I picked up this bottle, I was so surprised by how much was left because don't remember it being this empty. Not quite sure what happened. Evaporation maybe? Did the spiders in my garage get into it? This is one of the last great Elijah Craig Barrel Proofs before Elijah Craig Barrel Proof decided to take a shit on itself. It's Elijah Craig Barrel Proof Batch A120. The year 2020 was not great for many things. Let's face it, 2020, not so good. But when it came to Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, the year 2020 was friggin' phenomenal. A120 and C920 were like liquid high proof bourbon money, bitches. I loved those two batches so damn much. And B520, some people said was their favorite. But the last great year of Elijah Craig Barrel Proofs, 2020, this is one of my favorite bottles I have open, although it's almost empty. ECBP batch A120, friggin' gangster bourbon right there. OG stuff. Moving right along, we have a bottle that was procured from me last year. My favorite batch of this was batch four, but no matter what batch you can get your hands on, you are in for a treat. This is Old Carter American Whiskey. This one's batch number nine, 132.8 proof. It has an MGP light whiskey base from my understanding. It was then rebarreled into some amazing barrels and then blended to perfection. Old Carter American Whiskey is friggin' off phenomenal. It's not a word. Definitely one of my favorite bottles I have open. Try not to drink it very much because they're hard to get your hands on. We got two left. We got two left. We got two left. And speaking of two, this bottle that I currently have open, I opened when I hit 50,000 subscribers. I shot a 50,000 subscriber thank you video where I re-reviewed this bottle and then re-watched an old video of mine where I reviewed it in the first place. That video I edited half of and then decided that I wasn't going to edit any further because my rate of speech was like one word every eight seconds. My eyes were half closed and even I didn't know if I was shit-faced or tired. So that video will probably never see the light of day. But I'll just show you anyway. One of my favorite bottles that I currently have open is 100% Bardstown Bourbon Company Discovery Series number two. This is an all Kentucky bourbon blend. 44% 10 year Kentucky bourbon, 39% 12 year Kentucky bourbon, and 17% 14 year Kentucky bourbon. Discovery series number one, two, three, and four were some of the best bourbons that were being produced in the time that they were being produced. They were working with some amazing barrels back then, and the way that they blended them and put them together was like, so good, so damn good, so good. Like I said at the beginning of the video that the last bottle I would show you would be my favorite bottle that I currently have open. That would not be a lie. I've shown you nine bottles of my favorite whiskeys that I currently have open, but what I've learned about myself is this. Sometimes I put bottles behind bottles on the shelf so that I forget about them and don't drink them all. So occasionally I go digging in a shelf and I'm like, good grief, 
Wild Turkey Diamond. So if I'm forgetting something that I have or have reviewed in the past that I currently have open but has just slipped my mind, please forgive me. These are just 10 bottles that I could see myself that I put on a shelf and didn't hide from me or myself. Tomorrow I might move a bottle and go, shoot, I completely forgot I had that and I should have put it in that video. Favorite bottle that I currently have open, I opened on my 50,000 subscriber live stream where I was celebrating 50K. Thank you Toshi Bake for this bottle of Kentucky Owl Bourbon Batch 9. This is a Dixon Deadman masterpiece. This is the third bottle of this that I've had. First bottle of this was a gift from Dixon Deadman that was gifted to me by Perry Ritter of This Is My Bourbon Podcast on Perry's podcast that Dixon gave to him to give to me. Second bottle was a gift from Dan and Julie Like. Third bottle, a gift from Toshi Friggin Bake. 63.8% ABV, one of the most glorious, beautiful, and best labels in the game. Kentucky Owl Bourbon Batch 9 will always go down in history in my heart of one of the best bourbons I've ever owned, tasted, and holds the most sentimental value you can imagine. This is my favorite bottle that I currently have open. So, thank you for watching. If you're not subscribed yet, please hit the subscribe button. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up. If you hated the video, hit the thumbs up. If you have an idea for a video like this, put it in the comments below, I'd love to hear it. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Matt, this is ADHD Whiskey, and like I always say, keep your head in the clouds, but your mind on garbage disposals and how they just suddenly stop working. Because why is that? Yesterday, the garbage disposal had no issue just eating through an entire friggin' watermelon that went bad in the fridge because nobody ate it. Even though the kids and the wife wanted me to buy a ginormic watermelon and I carved it up into the most luxurious, luscious, delicious watermelon squares, nobody ate it. So the garbage disposal ate it and it ate it flawlessly. And then today I go to use the garbage disposal and guess what? It doesn't break, it's not spinning, it's just making that sound. Like what in the heck happened? I don't think there's anything stuck in there, it's just just moaning. Sounds like Forrest Gump's mom. You know what I mean? If you ever watched Forrest Gump, you know what I mean. All I'm saying is this, why do garbage disposals have to give us such crap? Come on, you've got one job and it's to literally dismantle anything I put down you, even if it's my hand. So quit being a little bitch and spin your little blades around. You know what I'm saying? Do your job, garbage disposal. I'm not gonna sit around here and wait for you to start working again. I'm gonna talk to a camera about it and cry. Cause what, what's your friggin' deal? Don't feel like going to work today? What are you calling out sick garbage disposal? Guess what? There's a million other garbage disposals lined up for your job because you got it good. You got it real good. You don't even know how good you have it. You have benefits like watermelon sometimes. You don't get worked that much. You're basically on call, but when you're not working, all you got to do is just sit in the sink and look up through the drain and out the window at the beautiful trees and sunshine. You got nothing going on. You got nothing going on. So when I need you, I expect that you're ready to work. And if you can't work, I don't want to find out at the last second. I'm going to need an email or a fax. I want you to fax in sick. Let me know that you're not going to be able to perform before I need you. Because when I needed you most, guess what you did? Nothing. You did nothing. You disposed of nothing.